Hello, and welcome to my new video. Today we are representing one of the strongest, most dangerous organizations in our history. Today we are going through beginnings of mafia. You will see types of families who does not hesitate to ruin your life, family, property if you have done anything wrong to them or you have just step on their way. If you ever asked yourself how mafia worked, especially Italian, Cosa Nostra, we will try with this video to make you have a closer look onto it. So, stay with us and enjoy our new episode. First of all, who were the Italian Mafia and what were they doing? The Sicilian Mafia, also simply known as the Mafia and frequently referred to in the United States as Cosa Nostra by its members, is an Italian Mafia terrorist-type criminal society originating on the island of Sicily and dating to at least the 19th century. It is a loose association of organized criminal syndicates that share a common organizational structure, code of conduct or of honor, and present themselves to the public under a common brand. The basic group is known as a family or a clan. Each family claims sovereignty over a territory, usually a town, village or neighborhood, borgata, of a larger city, in which it operates its rackets. Its members call themselves men of honor, although the public often refers to them as mafiosi. By the 20th century, wide-scale emigration from Sicily facilitated the formation of mafiosi-style gangs in Australia, the United Kingdom, Canada, the United States and South America. These diaspora-based outfits replicated the traditions and methods of their Sicilian ancestors to varying extents. The Mafia's core activities are protection racketeering, the arbitration of disputes between criminals, and the organizing and oversight of illegal agreements and transactions. Where and how did word Mafia came from? The word Mafia was originated in Sicily. The Sicilian noun Mafioso, in Italian, Mafioso, roughly translates to mean swagger, but can also be translated as boldness. In reference to a man, mafiosu in 19th century Sicily was ambiguous, signifying a bully, arrogant but also fearless, enterprising and proud, according to scholar Diego Gambetta. In reference to a woman, however, the feminine form, mafiosa, means a beautiful or attractive female. The Sicilian word mafi refers to the caves near Trapani and Marsala, which were often used as hiding places for refugees and criminals. Sicily was once an Islamic emirate, therefore mafia word might have Arabic roots. The public's association of the word with the criminal secret society was perhaps inspired by 1863 play by Giuseppe Rosato and Gaspar Mosca. The words mafia and mafiosi are never mentioned in the play. The drama is about a Palermo prison gang with traits similar to the mafia, a boss, an initiation ritual, and talk of umurda, omurda or code of silence, and pizzu, a codeword for extortion money. The play had great success throughout Italy. Soon after, the use of the term mafia began appearing in the Italian state's early reports on the group. The word was first documented in 1865 in a report by the prefect of Palermo Filippo Antonio Gualtierio. The term mafia has become a generic term for any organized criminal network with similar structure, methods, and interests. But Giovanni Falcone, the anti-mafia judge who was murdered by the mafia in 1992, had objected to the conflation of the term mafia with organized crime in general. While there was a time when people were reluctant to pronounce the word mafia, nowadays people have gone so far in the opposite direction that it has become an overused term. I am no longer willing to accept the habit of speaking of the mafia in descriptive and all-inclusive terms that make it possible to stack up phenomena that are indeed related to the field of organized crime but that have little or nothing in common with the mafia. Now when we know from where we got mafia word, Let's have a little perspective of Sicilian Mafia and what were they doing exactly. In 1876, Leopoldo Franchetti described the Sicilian Mafia as an industry of violence. In 1993, the Italian sociologist Diego Gambetta described it as a cartel of private protection firms. He further characterized mafiosi as guarantors of trust. The central activity of the Mafia is the arbitration of disputes between criminals and the organization and enforcement of illicit agreements through the use of violence. The Mafia does not serve the general public as the police do, but only specific clients who pay them for protection. The Mafia's principal activities are settling disputes among other criminals, protecting them against each other's cheating, and organizing illicit agreements, often involving many agents, such as illicit cartel agreements in otherwise legal industries. 
The Sicilian Mafia is not a centralized organization. It is a cartel of independent criminal gangs who sell their services under a common brand. This cartel claims the exclusive right to sell extra-legal protection services within their territories, and by their labels like Man of Honor, they distinguish themselves from common criminals whom they exclude from the protection market. Hence the term mafia found a class of violent criminals ready and waiting for a name to define them, and, given their special character and importance in Sicilian society, they had the right to a different name from that defining vulgar criminals in other countries said Leopoldo Franchetti, 1876. Franchetti argued that the mafia would never disappear unless the very structure of the island's social institutions were to undergo a fundamental change. Over a century later, Diego Gambetta concurred with Franchetti's analysis, arguing that the mafia exists because the government does not provide adequate protection to merchants from property crime, fraud, and breaches of contract. How did mafia look back in post-feudal Sicily? The mafia's genesis began in the 19th century as the product of Sicily's transition from feudalism to capitalism as well as its unification with mainland Italy. Under feudalism, the nobility owned most of the land and enforced the law through their private armies and manorial courts. After 1812, the feudal barons steadily sold off or rented their lands to private citizens. Primogeniture was abolished, land could no longer be seized to settle debts, and one-fifth of the land became private property of the peasants. After Italy annexed Sicily in 1860, it redistributed a large share of public and church land to private citizens. The result was a huge increase in the number of landowners, from 2000 in 1812 to 20,000 by 1861. With this increase in property owners and commerce came more disputes that needed settling, contracts that needed enforcing, transactions that needed oversight, and properties that needed protecting. The barons released their private armies to let the state take over the job of enforcing the law, but the new authorities were not up to the task, largely due to clashes between official law and local customs. Lack of manpower was also a problem. There were often fewer than 350 active policemen for the entire island. Some towns did not have any permanent police force, and were only visited every few months by some troops to collect malcontents, leaving criminals to operate with impunity in the interim. Compounding these problems was banditry. Rising food prices, the loss of public and church lands, and the loss of feudal commons pushed many desperate peasants to steal. In the face of rising crime, booming commerce, and inefficient law enforcement, property owners turned to extra-legal arbitrators and protectors. These extra-legal protectors eventually organized themselves into the first mafia clans. Companies at Arms These companies at arms were often made up of former bandits and criminals, usually the most skilled and violent of them. This saved communities the trouble of training their own policemen, but it may have made the companies at arms more inclined to collude with their former brethren rather than destroy them. Scholars such as Salvatore Lupo have identified these groups as proto-mafia. The mafia was, and still is, a largely western Sicilian phenomenon. There was little mafia activity in the eastern half of Sicily. This did not mean that there was little violence, the most violent conflicts over land took place in the east, but they did not involve mafiosi. Mafiosi used their allies in government to avoid prosecution as well as persecute less well-connected rivals. Given the highly fragmented and shaky Italian political system, cliques of mafia-friendly politicians exerted a strong influence. In a series of reports between 1898 and 1900, Ermano San Giorgi, the police chief of Palermo, identified 670 mafiosi belonging to eight mafia clans, which went through alternating phases of cooperation and conflict. This was the first part of our story about Italian mafia. As you could hear we were talking just about beginnings of Italian mafia and their rays through the history. In the next part of this video we will talk about Italian mafia under Mussolini regime and modern mafia. If you have enjoyed video, please click like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and see you in next video.